Hey, what's up guys? It's Marissa and I'm back for another BookTube video and today I want to go over my top 10 favorite fantasy series so far in my life. I was going to do top 10 favorite fantasy books, but then I realized that every single thing on my list was a series and that I love the series. So I figured, you know what, I might as well just go ahead and do series because obviously I'm a series reader, not really a standalone book type of reader. So let's just get into it. So the first one on my list is, of course, Harry Dresden series by Jim Butcher. Obviously, I'm a Jim Butcher stan. Enough said. Not going to say it anymore. <clears throat> so Harry Dresden is a, it's kind of like a contemporary fantasy. Harry Dresden is a wizard living among mortals, and he even advertises himself in the phone book as that he is a wizard and he finds lost things and yada, yada, yada. So right now, there's like 20 some books out in this series. I am anxiously awaiting the next one, which would hopefully be in 2020. 20, but Harry goes on all sorts of adventures and I mean he is fighting goblins and ghouls and ghosts and and other wizards and he's fighting demons and he's fighting all kinds of crazy creatures. He even fights a purple monkey, purple flying monkey who flings flaming poo at people, okay? Like tell me that is not hilarious. It's very much like a satire and it, it was supposed to be a joke is the way that Jim Butcher to told it. He wrote his first book as a joke. It was a dare that one of his friends dared him to do and then all of a sudden it turned into to this big thing and it's a cult favorite with his fans so anyway pick those books up for sure so the next one is the renegade series by marissa meyer and i'm still not quite sure if that really counts it i mean sci-fi fantasy it's it's about superheroes of course you're following these superheroes and you're following one who is a good guy and one who is a bad guy and it kind of flips those roles on its head and it's very much a YA kind of thing um, you're following basically these two teenagers who end up on this team together and the girl Nova is actually masquerading as a good guy while trying to fulfill the bad guys motives so so it's really quite interesting and you kind of see this like romance blooming but it's more about it's more about the motives and and the fighting than it is about the romance which I definitely like so the next one is the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs and uh, Mercy Thompson she is a coyote shapeshifter who is living among werewolves and it's really interesting because she gets her powers from <clears throat> like these old school what they call skinwalkers because her father was one and the werewolves of course they get turned because they get bitten so she's like living amongst this pack and they consider her lesser because she's a coyote and they're wolves and mercy is she's a badass she is a vw mechanic um she holds her own she can kick any of the guys asses it's it's a great great series there's i think god i think there's almost 20 books in that series too um pretty much get one a year with that one so that series is definitely really good if you like a strong female character who can hold her own who's not like oh yeah I got kidnapped again let somebody else save me hell no mercy saves her damn self quite a few times I'm just saying the werewolves the men are really just there as kind of like a backdrop to her badassery I'm just saying so the next one is the Georgina Kincaid series by Rochelle Mead and this one is about a succubus who is a she basically got turned into a succubus she sold her soul to hell and now she is a succubus and that's the way that she has to live the rest of her life and she really is a good person and she got harangued into working for hell because of some bad circumstances she made some really bad decisions in her life like thousands upon thousands thousands of years ago because she's been alive that long but <clears throat> she's she's like a girly girl but she kicks ass too and basically it's set in modern day and she's working at a bookstore she is a avid avid book lover she ends up falling in love with a writer for crying out loud and you just kind of see their story and also this this hell story going on too so it is very much like a paranormal romance almost but it's got a lot of ass kicking in it too so the next one is, of course, the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. And I mean, you either love it or you hate it. So I'm not really not going to go into too much detail because I think literally everyone knows what Harry Potter is. So anyway, 
Uh, Codex Alera by Jim Butcher also. This one is very much like an elemental fantasy. It's set almost like it's set in a different world, but it's set in almost like this medieval fantasy world. And, you know, of course there are kings and queens and yada, yada, yada. And uh, people have these elemental powers where they can wield these elementals. And they're basically like these pets that they can call on to give them elemental powers. And you're following Tabby, who is a young boy, and he doesn't have any powers. So in this world, he is the outcast because he's normal and he hates it. So you go through seeing him and he's living with his aunt and his uncle. He didn't know his mom. He didn't know his dad. So he's very much an orphan. And he ends up going to the big city and he gets into this magic academy, in other words, and he still feels like the odd man out because he doesn't have any powers. But his story goes through the years that he's at school. There's quite a few of these books. They're all out. So the entire series is out at this point. So... You go through him going to the school and he's meeting all these different people and he's learning to maneuver the politics of this big city and the president king guy kind of takes him under his wing um, and he ends up Tabby ends up being his like assistant protege kind of thing. Um, so you get to see you get to see it from both sides of the story there, and you get to see him uh, Tabby evolve as a character quite a bit. So it, it's a very interesting series. I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I would because the Jim Butcher the. Harry Dresden series by Jim Butcher is written in first person, so you're inside of Harry's head the whole time. And then this series is written in third person, so you're getting an outsider's perspective. And it was really strange for me because that, that was not what I was expecting when I was going into this book. So just be forewarned that if you read both of these two series, they're different. They're very different as far as perspe perspectives. So, the next one is the Kara Gillian series by Diana Rowland, and this one, uh, Kara Gillian is a demon summoner, and basically she's a witch that summons demons, and that's where witches get their powers from, that's where they learn things from, is they, they summon these demons, and... So every time you summon a demon, you have to be strong enough to control it, and you have to be strong enough to trap it. Now well, one day, Kara accidentally summons a demon that is way too strong for her, and thankfully, um, he is very amused by the fact that she accidentally summoned him. So he makes her a deal. And I'm not going to tell you too much more because it'll spoil it, but the series is, is pretty darn good. Um, if you like demons and kind of like witches and summoning and all that, and it is very much set in like a modern day, modern day story. So the next one is the All Souls Trilogy by Deborah Harkness. And if you don't know what this one is about, this is about a witch who ends up falling in love with a vampire. And it is very, it's very much an adult fantasy. And I don't really know how to describe this whole series besides that it's very intellectual, it's very well written, it's very well researched because the main character is a researcher and you meet her and she is in the library and she's doing this in-depth research and then all of a sudden people are attacking her and she has no idea why. So. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people have read this already because this was in its heyday like I don't even know how long ago it's been a while since I've read them but um, yeah if that intrigues you at all it's yeah, I'm telling you what you're gonna want to read it on Kindle or have a dictionary handy because a lot of the terminology that Deborah Harkness uses in these books is very it's like PhD level or above and it gets very confusing like even to me I'm like what the hell does that word even mean and I know she didn't do it just to be purposefully confusing but I mean you almost need a master's degree just to read this stuff so the next one is the Alex Craft series by Kalena Price and this one is about a woman who can see ghosts 
and she can interact with ghosts and she is the only one around her who can do that and basically she can put ghosts back in their grave she's well she's kind of like a necromancer she can summon she can summon not zombies they're not zombies she can summon souls from the grave and basically she's like summoning these souls and they're like she's having them like testify in court and stuff so this it's it's a modern day story where you know the paranormal world is all out in the open so she's like bringing these souls back back to life and having them testify in court about who killed them or you know where so-and-so's mother buried the treasure or whatever and so it that one's pretty interesting as well it's very much like witchcraft and there's some fairies in there and of course the necromantic aspect of it so the final one is of course the six of crows duology by lee bardugo that was the first the first Lee Bardugo book that I ever picked up was Six of Crows and then Crooked Kingdom. And I thought those were so good. So, so good. I just, I really like the the fact that you're following characters who are morally gray. They're bad guys. They're thieves. They're murderers. They're, you know, troublemakers, whatever. But So you're following all these characters who who are good. They do bad things, but they're they're still ultimately good. They're doing them for the right reasons. They're doing them to survive. They're doing them for the greater good. So I really like that the fact that it is following morally gray characters. I like a lot of books with morally gray characters because that's what life is. It's morally gray. It's it's in between. You do good things and you do bad things and it's it's not just about your motivations and, and not just about what you're doing. It's about how you live your life and how you're trying to change change things for the better. So, I really was was fascinated by these books because of that and I heard a lot of people say and I definitely agree with this that those books read like if those are teenagers then you know that's bullshit because they read like adults and it's probably because they are, were all misfits who basically grew up on the streets so they really had to grow up fast so they seem and they're written much older than what their actual age is supposed to be and I I understand that on some level because I would imagine that if I grew up on the streets that I would probably act a lot older than I am, which I've always been told that, that I act a lot older than I am anyway. Um, so I, I really get where they're coming from. So yeah, those were my top 10 fantasy series and hopefully you guys at least heard something that sounds good to you and maybe you guys will go pick them up. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful evening and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.